We've talked about oils and shellac and wood preparation and many other things so far in the previous videos of this French Polishing Fundamental series. But today we're gonna to talk about what I think is the most important of all, and that is the technique for applying the finish. We're gonna look at the pad, the materials I like to use, and I'm gonna show you some of my most important techniques and demonstrate them and explain why they're so important and why they can help you get better results in your French polishing process. My name's Tom Bills, and welcome to The Art of Luthery. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about making the pad and uh, the process, the technique of actually putting on just kind of the basic fundamentals of the technique. Okay, so first thing is, uh, the, what works best for me is cheesecloth. I buy just a regular cheesecloth that you get from the grocery store. Uh, it's nothing fancy, it's not a fancy kind. I don't even know what the, people have asked me before, is it like number two, or I forget how they measure it, but whatever. This is just whatever you get from the grocery store. <clears throat> that was one of the things that Eugene tried to, you know, like get through my head was just use things that you can get easily because sometimes people go out of, things go out of business and sometimes it gets hard as times change. Well, he was about, he had to be in his 70s or 80s when I went to learn from him. So he'd been around a lot longer than me. And, and in my mind, it was like, oh, I can buy something from a special store. It's always going to be there, but I can tell you now that the, just this number of years later since then, less than 20 years later, a lot of the places where I was getting things are now gone. Um, I just realized my maple supplier that I got some of the greatest pieces of maple of my whole career that I made beautiful guitars out of, they're gone, they just disappeared. Uh, I think COVID took them out, but anyway. Um, so I get this from the grocery store, which is a good thing to do if you can figure out ways to get simple things locally and build that into your system because it's more likely to be around if things get weird, which they have gotten weird lately. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, okay. So I use this, this, is the, this, this functions two things. So this becomes the core of the pad for the body session and, and I use just the cheesecloth itself for the pumice pore filling, okay? And then for the outer part of the pad, I just use regular t-shirt material. And what you want here, the key to your t-shirt material for making the best possible French polishing cover for your pad, uh, some people call it a muñeca or whatever, there's lots of different names for it. I'm just gonna call it the pad because that's just easy. But when you're, so what I do is I buy a pack of t-shirts, uh, just regular old like Hanes or whatever kind you've got cheap, get some from Walmart or something. Just as long as they're cotton, you just want it to be cotton, you don't want a bunch of synthetic fibers in there and then wear them and let them go through the laundry cycle until they start getting holes. So as soon as you see the first hole, usually you'll get one in the armpit area or like on a seam or something like that, or maybe a seam down near the bottom, you'll see a little hole start coming. That's when it's perfect for French polishing. So that's when it goes into my French polishing pile and you end up with a cycle going there where you get lots of t-shirts, you know, that are ready. You could, you could buy new t-shirts and use them. They're probably going to be okay. But there's something about letting those fibers get broken down through those laundry cycles and stuff that just makes it nicer. And sometimes I kind of pull it out, shape, I, I uh, kind of stretch it out like this a little too. I don't know, for whatever reason, it seems nice. It seems good. Um, <clears throat> so that, that's really it. Cheesecloth, or cheesecloth, cotton t-shirt material that's worn out if possible. And that's really the whole thing for making the pad that I'm gonna use. So next, let me show you how to fold it because there's a specific way to fold it. So when we're doing the cheesecloth, I just roll out from that thing that I showed you. Uh, it's about three sections, you know? So like when you're rolling it out, I unfold about three, you know? So that's about the equivalent of, of three session, uh, sections like this, and then I just trim it with my scissors here. Um, and then what I like to do is I lay this piece out, and then I'm gonna fold this into thirds, like that. And then I fold it in thirds one more time, like this, oops. And it doesn't have to be exact. You know, you're just trying to get it like this. And what I like is this area here, 
where you've kind of got three layers and I, I maybe I even kind of get tight up against that a little like that. So I've got a nice little buildup of material right here and that's important. That's gonna be the nose of the pad. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm going to fold it like this, almost like you're making a paper airplane or something like that. Then I bring the, the back up just a little bit like that. And then these wings are gonna come in and then this is how I, how I make it like that. So it's almost like, I don't know, loosely you could say it's a little bit of a diamond kind of shape. Not quite, but you know, it had, the key is that you have like a nice core area here. And then you have this little nose where my index finger can rest. And that's important because as I'm working and as this pad starts to dry out, I'm able to apply pressure with my index finger up here and squeeze it out as it becomes dry. And that's really the thing is working with this dry pad is really the key. Um, I was about to move this and I realized I didn't mention about this. So this is where I store the stuff after I'm done using it. I'll usually take my alcohol and I'll just give everything a, you know, a nice slug of alcohol. And then I just pop it in here, put the lid on until the next time I'm ready to French polish. That's a nice way to keep it going. And it is nice to continue using your, at least the core of your pad. You can change out the cover as time goes, but um, once the core kind of gets it takes a while to kind of break it in. When you start with a new one like this, it's just a little fluffy and it's a little, um, it just takes a little bit to work it in, you know? So you have to be extra careful in the beginning part. So if I'm doing, before I talk about the cover and some other stuff, let's just talk about pore filling real quick. I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate that right now, but for pore filling, I like a 2F pumice. It's a little rougher. When I switch to 2F, um, I just got way better. It was a big improvement. Most people recommend a 4F, which is a finer pumice. Um, and I just feel like uh, there's an, I just get better results with a two. It just cuts a little better and it's just easier to fill. So the way it works with the, um, with the pore filling for me, for my system, is I basically just take some like this on my finger. Let's see. Normally I pour it out in a, a little bit, but I'm just trying to give you a quick little Thing. So like maybe that much, I'm gonna put it on here. I'm not gonna actually do it because I wanna actually do some polishing on here without pumice. But I would, I would take that pumice, just a little bit of fingertip full, and just put it on there. And then what I do is I take my shellac, we'll just use this one. So then I would take my shellac and I'm gonna get a fingertip full of shellac and then I put that on, this is a dark shellac, so you'll see it, which I thought it would be good for this because the camera can actually see it well. So then my shellac's gonna go on there and like um, take the pumice, which is white, and it's gonna turn it clear. But the reason I wanna turn it clear with shellac is because the shellac will keep it clear. If you just turn it clear with alcohol, then eventually that alcohol is gonna go away and that's how you end up with white pumice in your pores sometimes on accident. If you've ever encountered that, it's not fun. So for the pore filling, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna clear that shellac. And then after the shellac is clear, then typically I'm gonna take a whole swig. I call this like a swig or a shot. So then I'm gonna just do that. So you saw that I cleared it with just a fingertip of shellac, but then I'm throwing a big slug of um, alcohol on there. So we're getting a lot more alcohol than shellac. That pumice is gonna be in there and the pad's gonna be pretty wet. Okay, so now here's the most important part. This is the, the secret of why so many people struggle with this. Because a wet pad, by wet I mean lots of alcohol and shellac, strips the finish off. A dry pad, where it's almost completely dry, is gonna build a nice shiny finish. That is the key thing to remember almost any problem that you're having with French polishing is probably related to that one statement. Okay, so if you're having trouble with getting streaks in your finish and getting soggy and, and just you, ha you start out with a pretty surface and then you go to try to put another coat on and it gets streaky and lumpy or whatever, your pad's too wet. And if you're trying to do pore filling and it's just not going in there and all of a sudden you're building finish on the surface and there's nothing going in the pores, that's because your pad's too dry because too dry, dry pad builds finish on the surface, wet pad rips it off the surface and deposits it deposits it in the pores. So remember that. So when you're doing pore filling, it's the opposite technique of when you're building the body coats. That's really important to remember. Okay, 
So let's get set up to um, talk about the technique of the actual bodying real quick. I mentioned bounty paper towels. Um, you always gotta have those handy for this, if you can. Um, for a while I used typing paper uh, when I didn't have the bounty paper towels. I'm gonna try and set it up in my usual way. Um, so normally, <clears throat> I mean, you do wanna pay attention to how you set things up uh, when you're working on your guitar. Typically, I'll have the guitar, now I'm right-handed, so typically my guitar is to the left side and then to the right, spaced as far to the right of my bench as I can, is my shellac area. In that shellac area, I'm gonna have my alcohol, my bench cut of shellac, and my, my olive oil, which I keep in a little dropper bottle like this. And I'm gonna have all that stuff ready for me, but I wanna separate it from my guitar because as you're loading your pad, it can splatter, things can splash, and you'll save yourself a lot of heartache if you've got a nice separation um, from where your guitar is to where you're dealing with blotting your pad or doing any of that kind of stuff. That's really important. I see some people showing French polishing or whatever, and they're loading the pad or something right over the top of the guitar, and you're just inviting trouble <laughs> if you do that. So anyway, so we're gonna do it like this is the core of the pad. <clears throat> and then, so that's folded the way I showed you before. Then I'm gonna take this pad and I just lay it, I take this cover and I just lay it over the top and then just wrap this back around like that, just like that. Okay, so now I've got that nice cheesecloth core and I have my um, cotton t-shirt cover. And I'm constantly going like this because I'm feeling this temperature um, of what it feels like. I wanna feel it's cold when that that alcohol starts drying and um, stuff like that on there. So uh, before I do anything, I mean, I did have a little bit on there, so I'm gonna just come in. When you come in, when you're stroked, when you're gonna come in and start, you're gonna come in gentle and land it. Don't You don't wanna plop it on there. You wanna come in very slow. And and for the first few seconds when I, when I bring this on, let's see if this light might show you a little more. <clears throat> now this is pretty dry right now. But when I first bring this on, I'm gonna come in and I'm just checking. Like right now, I'm, I'm basically just checking this thing to see, you know, how much, because I did put some alcohol on, remember, how much is on there, how wet is it? You gotta know that. And there's an order of operations that you can do. Some areas of the, of the guitar, you can get away with coming on with a, a pad that's got a little bit too much wetness when you're bodying like this. Other areas like the edges, if you go on a fresh, on an edge with a freshly loaded pad, you're gonna strip all that finish off because you remember the rule, the wet pad strips the finish, the dry pad builds it up. What you're going for is a spit shine. High friction, very little finish, lots of rubbing, gives you a very durable, glossy uh, finish that's gonna stay that way. Okay, so I kind of got comfortable with where this is so I kind of know that it's not overly wet. And so we're gonna go ahead and start this process. So. I'll typically go in with the shellac, a little fingertip full of the shellac first, like that, as you can see. And then I'll come in with the fingertip of this. And then, can you even see? That's, that's probably not enough. But basically one little drop. So I'm not even squeezing this dropper. I just touch it to the bottom of my finger. I don't know if you can even see that. Anyway, and then I just rub it across the bottom and that's it, that's it. So I'm gonna feel it. If you're unsure, you can blot it on here. That's what this paper is for. If I blot that and see a big wet spot, then I know this is way too wet. I'm gonna keep blotting it until it's barely making a mark, okay? And then when I come in, come in here, I'm just gonna land it in nice and easy, even like that and get a feel for it. This is very dry, so I can immediately start applying pressure. So when it comes in, I'm moving faster I'm not doing a lot of pressure because I got to, I have to assess how much, I'm gonna call it moisture, but it, you know, it's alcohol and shellac. How wet is that pad? This is very dry. So as soon as, I don't know if you could see it, but as soon as I came in and, and realized it was pretty dry, then I start actually making a lot of pressure and I'm pushing probably way harder than you might imagine on this. Okay, so let's, let's load this again. And the order doesn't matter, alcohol first, shellac first, it doesn't matter. At this point, this pad is, the, the core is really new, so there's not a lot going on inside there yet. And I'll just do a little more, just a tiny drop that I just rub on there like that. 
kind of mix it a little bit. It's really dry still, but hopefully now it's gonna to get to the point where we can actually see some stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna come in nice and easy like that. First thing I'm doing is sort of getting an idea of what it's like, it feels good. So now we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the basic technique that you need to know, which is the paint and pull over. So it's, you come in like this in a line and then pull that over. And then I'm gonna work another little line and pull it over and another little line and pull it over. And I'm altering speed and I'm altering, I'm altering the speed and I'm altering the um, pressure is, is on a constant curve of change. It's never the same. So when I come in and there's a little more moisture on the pad, I'm gonna be not pushing as hard and I'm gonna be moving faster. As, as I start to disperse that moisture, then I'm gonna be, um, as it dries out, let's say, then I can start moving slower and pushing harder, squeezing it out of the pad. This pad's very dry right now. We're gonna, we're just gonna get crazier and just go like this so I can speed this up and show you faster. Um, so this is gonna be really wet now. In fact, I'm gonna do this. You see, hopefully you can see that blotting out now. Okay, so here's about what I want. Let's see, about like that, where it's just barely making a mark. Okay, now I'm gonna give it a drop of oil and get it to come off there, on there. Okay, now we're gonna come in here and this has got a lot more moisture than what we had before. Okay, so now we're really doing some action here. Okay, so at this point, again, it's the paint and pull over but I'm, I'm not pushing as hard because I just loaded the pad and I'm moving faster and I'm covering more ground, okay? I might wanna try and blend that out a little too to make sure I don't have any lines. So you see how I just automatically do that. Now this thing is starting to dry out. So the minute that my pad begins to dry out, I'm gonna go work on something like the heel cap or an edge and then pull that back. See, that really, now we're putting on a beautiful finish. Now I'm pushing as hard as I can. I'm squeezing with my fingers and just getting every drop of that out of there. And it's just, I can feel it grabbing. And it's just shining up so beautifully on there. Like that. And then now, of course, I automatically am gonna go do all my edges. I do the edges like 10 million times with a real dry pad. When it's so dry that I'm really doing nothing out here, when I go to the edge, I'm still actually gonna build a little finish around those edges or those little details. You know, so you never wanna to go to a place like get in the heel where the heel meets the body or something. You don't wanna go do that with a wet pad. You wanna start out somewhere big, get it to where it's drying to that point where you can actually do some good pressure and get some friction and then move into that little area and then drop it in and then move before you overwork it. You know, if that makes sense. So that's really kind of the core. There's some other, there's some other things uh, like, you know, if you're dealing with a problem, sometimes a figure eight is nice. So if there's an issue like right here, you know, maybe I would go like that and, and work it from a couple areas. You don't want to overdo it and then pull it out. When the pad gets dry, then I can pull it out. And then, so the paint and pullover goes like this. You go forward, pull it back. And then you kind of overlap a little, go up, pull it back. So try that paint and pullover technique. Try the, um, changing uh, your speed and your pressure to match the amount of moisture that's in the pad uh, based on how it feels and how it looks and everything. Use your paper towel to blot it so that you're not going on. If I went on with this real wet spot here, then I probably would have put some smudges and lines and stuff in there. So, um, and there's, there's a lot of other things too, but it's way more than we can cover here in this today. But I think just if you can get that paint and pullover technique it's gonna, it's gonna help you so much. And what you absolutely don't wanna do is just get it real wet and just go psh, 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 like that. Your finish is, even if you are able to build up a nice looking finish at first, it's not gonna be hard because the thing that gives it the gloss, gives it the longevity, um, makes it just a good quality finish, it's the pressure. So I'm doing kind of this martial arts thing I talked about before. My knees are slightly bent, my legs are just, maybe shoulder width or more apart. My core is actually tight and I'm really using the frame of my upper body to get in here and actually have strength. Cause it's not that you're 
I'm gonna push with crushing strength, but it's that you're strong so that you can move slowly, but with a lot of control, you know, like you can flex and move like that. So you're, it's, it's a controlled strength. And it's very intentional too. I'm sort of mentally, again, thinking in phases. I'm dividing the workspace up into areas, like maybe that big. And, I, and I'm going to work that area, pull it over and do my stuff. And then maybe I'll work the next area. Maybe I'll reload. And I'm not, I'm not randomly doing it. I'm like very evenly. And this is really important when you're using color, like a darker shellac, which is like, like what we're using here, is you're, you want to mentally divide and work the whole thing evenly, right? To keep your color that you're adding even. When I'm done, let's see. So as I'm nearing the final coats of the, of the finish, I'm gonna work drier and drier and drier on that pad. And you're gonna have to, because as you build the surface uh, of the, if you build the finish thickness higher and higher as you go through all the different process or all the different sessions, then it becomes more and more finicky and susceptible and it's gonna basically punch you in the face if you go on there with a pad that's too wet. So you're gonna have to keep it drier and drier, you know, blot it out and be more and more careful of that. And by the la at last uh, sessions of shellac, you're essentially just shining it and polishing it. Uh, you're not really building anymore. So you're, you can like cut the amount. So like I might put, let's say in the beginning, I was using equal amounts of one or two finger, let's say two. So let's say in the beginning, I'm doing two fingertip fulls of of shellac and two fingertip fulls of, of alcohol. Sometimes if I need to, I'll, you can even load from back here, which is a neat little trick. Um, you can load it from the backside like that and get a little moisture up there that you can sort of give you an extra turbo boost and squeeze out, load a little shellac up there or whatever. So there's a lot of different things you can do with that. Um, there's a lot of subtleties to this. It is the art of French polishing. And of course, we go into detail in all this, and, and I, I do a whole guitar and show you every spot and all the different subtleties that go along with it. But my hope is that just understanding the, the paint and pullover, which is your core technique, the connection between um, the, the law, let's call it the law of French polishing, is a wet pad tears a finish off and puts it in the pores. That's how you do pore filling. A dry pad spit shines it with your pressure and friction and that builds you a durable, glossy, beautiful finish. And if you're just throwing it, wiping it on, or like almost like a brushing it on kind of a thing, it's not gonna ever have that kind of gloss and it's not gonna stay that way over time. So uh, when I'm done, I'm just gonna give this a good soak here. I'll pop it back into my little container here and now that core of that is going to be in a better situation so there's there's not going to be that sort of break in period like i when i was starting out where not much was going on it's going to be better and so a lot of times i'll use the core almost through the whole process but i'll change it once in a while but i don't change it unless i have to because it's nice once it gets kind of conditioned i'll just switch out the pad if it starts getting holes in it or gets too much built up on it or something like that sometimes you can just take the pad and flip it over and stuff like that if you need to instead of changing that too because as that cotton fiber continues to break down from it it actually gets a little better i think i hope you enjoyed this video and i sincerely hope that you enjoyed this entire french polishing fundamental series um, i've been so excited to get this out there and share it with you guys because i know what it feels like to be struggling and feel lost and in the dark and worried and scared that I'm gonna mess up a guitar that I worked so hard on just because I don't know the right technique for the French polishing or something like that. So I hope this has been helpful and uh, gave you some of those light bulb aha moments. But if you do wanna go deeper, if you do want a little more help, I do have a class called The Art of French Polishing. It's an online video course and rather than um, go on and on about all of the details here. Um, I'm gonna leave you with the trailer for that course so you can watch that and it'll give you all the information you need. Plus I'll put all the links below to the course, the previous videos, everything else. If you haven't subscribed yet, hope you'll subscribe so you'll be notified when we release our next video about guitar making. And without further ado, here is the trailer for the online video course, The Art of French Polishing. Mm -hmm.